let's set up the scene so you can see what I've been doing. I'm just going to add a procedural sphere. And then from the camera view, I'm just going to zoom in a bit so it fills up the screen. And then change a few render settings so it renders faster. Turn off anti-aliasing. Render to 640 by 480. And then in the surfaces, I'm just going to turn off the environment, background, and ground. So now when I render, you should see a sphere. So let's look at the material for this object. And create a new gradient for now. Let's put the color out from the gradient into the color input of the base. And then change the gradient so that it's something very unique. I'll do blue for the bottom, red for the top, and maybe we'll do a white. Very patriotic. So let's look at the different input parameters. You can do U, which is just telling it to use the input. And that is done by, let's do a new noise. Put the noise value into U and then render. And you can see that the noise is just is defining the placement of the gradient. So that's what U does. Get rid of that. Uh, light for now, when you render that, that is a gradient that mim that allows you to change its value based on the light source. So it's kind of also if you want to create your own tune shader that's a good way of doing little things like you can create your own little nifty specular highlight at the top here. So let's do that real quick. So here's my fake tune specular highlight because my input parameter is light for now. Let's get rid of that. My next input parameter is camera for now. When I render that, it's pretty obvious what that does. The normal from looking at straight at the camera is the red. Away from the camera at a 45 degree angle is white. Way at the back when it's 90 degrees, it touches this blue. So that's what I, and this is good for car paints and stuff like that. Normal slope takes your uh, no, the normal if it's facing directly up or along Y. It'll do red all the way down to blue, which is down on the negative Y. And that's good for actually placing on environment. That's a good one for that. Or like putting a little bit of dust on something. The object's U and V coordinate is something that doesn't really help for um, uh, anything other than hair. That's what that's good for. So uh, it's not really easy to demonstrate in any way. Um, I could actually. Let me try and load up an object. this object here and it's got UV coordinates and so if I hook apply this material to this object's little bit of material that it came in with and now I render using say U you can see that it uses the objects U and because it's based on triangles, it's, it's again, it's not very something that's very useful because I, um, it was created for and it is used for uh, 
creating the base to tip on hair and the width um, from, from facing the camera to away from the camera on a hair. So that's what that's used for. So let's just turn that object that we imported off. And go back to materials and value from calling shader is similar to you and not really anything that you need to worry about. Um, I honestly don't have never used these so I am not a good source of information as to what those are for. I'd recommend looking at the documentation. Um, same with these, I've never really used these. Uh, this light list is a list of lights that um, you want to have and also ignore. So if I have a different light that is um, looking at a different direction and I have um, my gradient for now set to use lights, um, it will try and use both which can be confusing when you want to have a different light source based on um, kind of you creating your own tune shader. So you can just turn one of them off and it will just use one but the other one is still there influencing the object and shining light on it and stuff like that. So that's what lights are good for on the input parameters of a light for now. Um, that is how you control the output. You can also control a lot of different inputs. Uh, basically all of these inputs can be controlled by shaders on the outside. So not really anything that needs to be demonstrated there. So I think that covers it. That's uh, how the gradient Fresnel, it's the very very basics of the gradient Fresnel shader.